can you change dyslexia with a light, with glasses, color overlays, color paper, uh, reading outside, reading upside down, uh, standing on your head, you name it. So can any of those things improve your reading? Obviously for the light, obviously if you have a light on, you can read better. Yeah. But they there's there's people out there trying to sell a yeah. some type of light bulb that that they claim allows you to read better. And let me answer it this way. Parents are very familiar in dealing with their pediatrician. And when you go to your pediatrician, you trust that whatever he finds is troubling your child, whether it's a strep throat, whether it's an ear infection, that they know which treatment has been proven to be most successful. They know the science, they know the research behind the treatments they're choosing. And there's little to no question about some of these basic, you know, diagnoses of strep throat or ear infection and what's going to be the best treatment. That's the same kind of question you would be asking any treatments coming for dyslexia is what's the research? Where's the proof that what you're telling me is going to be highly effective? Because without the proof, you're actually then just guinea pigging your child to try something that odds are is probably not going to be very effective because there's no evidence, there's no large scale, or even sometimes there's not actually not even any small scale studies that show that this is going to be effective. So to date, there's no randomized controlled trials that show light therapy changes reading skills that I know of. And I keep reading every day. I've been reading research about dyslexia, gosh, for about 38 years now. Um, there's no studies I know of that show the overlays consistently change reading skills. Now, consequently, you'll hear if some parents say, yeah, but it really helped my kid. He said his reading was better. Well, that's interesting observation, but you really want clear study to say, yeah, but if we give that same overlay to every kid with dyslexia, if it's really a core treatment, it should be able to be tested and proven to be effective. And so far, Erlen lenses or Erlen disorder has really not been proven to be a reliable diagnosis and nor has, there been, nor has there been proven to be a really reliable treatment. And it may relate more to contrast and to sensitivities. And certainly, yeah, there could be some kids who have more trouble looking at print with contrasting backgrounds, but it's not seen as a core cause of dyslexia, nor is it seen as a reliable treatment for it. And then usually when parents get into some of those kind of other treatments like a, um, a treatment that involves, yeah, spinning on a wheel board or, you know, doing motor skills or doing, you know, gym activities um, or doing things that we're going to, they use, they use neuro terms. We're going to rewire the right side with the left side. We're going to get the two to talk together. Like sounds powerful. Sounds logical. Show me the research that proves that that actually happens and that reliably changes reading skills. And that's usually where these other programs fall apart. Here's one reason that that's allowed to happen. Um, to be of anybody in healthcare, any profession in healthcare, to be any of those providers, speech pathology, OT, psychology, physician, dentist, all of those healthcare professions require a license. And then there's a code of ethics and there's ethical responsibilities and there's an expectation of science required of those professions. Sadly for parents, there's no licensing required to open a dyslexia center. So consequently, we're seeing more and more of these things opening like wildfire right now because of our supposed COVID gap in literacy. More parents are more aware that their child's not reading very well because when they were doing home-based school during COVID and working from home parent, they heard their kid read and they realized that B or that A in reading doesn't guarantee the kid actually was reading really well. And they now are becoming more aware of that nationally about 60%, 60 percent, six zero. It's an alarming statistic, and you go to www.nationsreportcard.gov. It's N-A-T-I-O-N-S-R-E-P-O-R-T-C-A-R-D, nationsreportcard.gov, and you can look at data that shows we've been tracking the literacy rates in the U.S. since 1971 across fourth graders, eighth graders, and twelfth graders. And since 1971, we've seen the educational system make zero progress no substantial progress whatsoever in the rate of literacy across the country, which means in 1971, about 35% of kids left school in grade four, eight or 12. That's when they measured them. 
And when they left school and when they measured them at those grade points, only 35% had grade level reading accuracy, grade level reading speed, or grade level reading comprehension. And understand that means they're only reading it or comprehending at about the 30th percentile. Today, and you know, the last data point is 2022, we're still at about 35%. We haven't had any improvement in literacy instruction across the world or actually across the country in the US for our data, but arguably we don't see it really changing anyplace else either because there's no license required to actually do these types of interventions and there's no proof of effectiveness required for a literacy program. Physicians require proof that an antibiotic works and it can't go to market until it has extensive research showing that it works. That standard doesn't exist in education. And it's really creating a chronic literacy problem not only across the United States, but across the world.